good afternoon, good morning. <clears throat> uh, this is lecture two. In lecture one, we have uh, introduced special uh, sub-varieties of uh, the Grassmannian known as Schubert varieties, which uh, gave rise to Schubert classes uh, in the chowering uh, of uh, a Grassmannian. These were indexed by uh, the Schubert classes were indexed by Young diagrams that were fitting inside the K by N minus K uh, rectangle. And uh, we also introduced Pieri rule, which so far for us um, uh, was um, uh, quite formal and uh, related to uh, symmetric uh, polynomials. Uh, this was um, a rule that allowed us to uh, multiply uh, either uh, either sure polynomials or just uh, formally uh, Young uh, diagrams by a Young diagram that has one row on one quaron column. Maybe I will start by uh, making one more example of uh, Pieri rule. Uh, let me uh, let me let me present it. Uh, so uh, I will just write the uh, Young diagrams uh, without. Um, without uh, referring to sure uh, polynomials. Uh, let us try to multiply the following uh, diagram uh, times uh, uh, the following one. Well, so the, we will always, let me recall, we always start with, uh, uh, we always start uh, with this shape and now we have to add the two new boxes so where where can we add them well we could add them i will i will add them in red here the only rule is that we are not allowed to add two in one column so where else could we add them uh, we could add them here we could add them here and we could add them here Um, oh, and I missed one. We could also add them here. Okay, uh, so uh, this is Pieri rule. And now uh, a very important theorem is uh, to relate uh, these uh, two constructions uh, we have um, made so far. That is to describe the product structure on the chowering of the Grassmannian. I will present it as a theorem. Uh, the product of two Schubert classes in the chow ring of the Grassmannian uh, is given by is given by uh, the following formula. So we have to multiply uh, uh, two classes indexed by Young diagrams. This is a uh, sum of uh, other uh, Schubert uh, classes, and uh, it comes with coefficients. Uh, what what are those coefficients? Are 
the Littlewood Richardson coefficients. Uh, in some sense, this tells us uh, that uh, uh, to multiply Schubert classes, we use the same rule as to multiply Schur polynomials. The only thing is that we have to remember that um, uh, certain classes do not appear in the, uh, in the uh, uh, Chow ring. So, uh, so let me, let me uh, make this uh, more precise. The, Chow ring of uh, Grassmannian is isomorphic to the ring of symmetric polynomials. Uh, in uh, k variables yeah, so this k variables will tell us that we will only consider um, uh, young uh, diagrams with at most uh, k uh, uh, rows but now we also have to restrict to n minus k columns <coughs> that means we have to work modular and ideal generated uh, by uh, sure polynomials by sure polynomials s lambda uh, for which uh, lambda one is greater than n minus k okay so uh, so this uh, this isomorphism uh, let me just write it it sends uh, the um, schubert uh, class to the corresponding uh, sure polynomial and uh, the above uh, theorem just exactly tells us that the product structure is um, as we expect so on both sides it's given by uh, Littlewood uh, uh, Richardson coefficients. I will not give a proof of uh, this theorem, but just maybe let me tell you that to prove the theorem, to prove, it's enough to show that Pieri rule um, holds uh, in the uh, Chow ring. Uh, and for these, I provide precise uh, references uh, in uh, uh, in the notes, uh, because in fact the Pieri rule gives you uh, uniquely the product uh, structure. It uh, to multiply any classes, you can reduce it to uh, multiplication using the uh, Pieri uh, rule. Now, uh, I I wanted to say a, a few more uh, words uh, uh, about. Uh, about uh, Grassmannians. So uh, one thing is that uh, there is a natural isomorphism between a uh, Grassmannian of uh, k planes uh, in uh, the vector space uh, V and uh, the Grassmannian of n minus k planes in the dual vector space. Here the dimension of V is uh, n. Uh, namely, if we have a subspace uh, a subspace uh, uh, lambda of the space V k-dimensional. So 
Note that such an inclusion gives us naturally a, a projection. So, uh, so, uh, so uh, it's not true that lambda dual is in uh, V dual, only a linear form of on V by restriction gives us a, a linear form on, uh, on uh, lambda. And what we want is we want naturally a subspace of V dual. So what we have to do is we have to look at the surjection where we just quotient by lambda. And this surjection gives us a rise to an inclusion of the dual vector space uh, inside, uh, inside um, uh, V dual. Okay, so this isomorphism, what I want to say, it sends lambda to uh, V uh, over uh, lambda dual. And uh, please note that to say this, I did not have to make any choices of basis. Many people say that GKN is isomorphic to GN minus KN just by taking, let's say, orthogonal complement or, or something like that. But to talk about orthogonal complement, you need uh, more structure on a vector space than just just the vector space uh, itself. While the isomorphism I, I have given does um, not require uh, any uh, additional structures. So in particular, if this is a natural isomorphism, we should somehow be able uh, to say something about the chow rings on both uh, sides. And, uh, um, and uh, uh, indeed, indeed, uh, uh, they have to be isomorphic. Well, and notice that one has a natural basis con uh, consisting uh, of Young uh, diagrams inside the K times N minus K rectangle. Uh, the other one has uh, a natural basis consisting of Young diagrams in N minus K times n minus n minus k, so k rectangle. So the rectangles are the same, they are just transposed. Uh, and indeed, uh, indeed uh, the natural thing uh, is, to, uh, is to send lambda to the conjugate, conjugate uh, partition. Well, defining conjugate partition uh, formally uh, with with numbers is uh, uh, is uh, not uh, so nice. Uh, but uh, on a picture, as if 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 you make a colorful picture, uh, it's uh, it's very very easy. So uh, if you if you have a, a young diagram like that, so without colors, the uh, conjugate uh, uh, partition just uh, does the following. Uh, so, uh, uh, it, it, it looks like that, yes? So you basically change rows into columns and um, uh, vice versa. Okay, so notice that we have basically completely described the chowering of um, uh, the Grassmannian so far. Now, uh, what, uh, what I would um, uh, very much uh, like to say now is how to, how to use this in uh, uh, practice. Uh, I, 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 I hope to present the uh, problems now. So the general problem is as follows. Uh, given, given conditions, C1 up to CM on K planes. Yes, so C1 is some condition that a K plane in CN may or may not satisfy. And we have M such possibly distinct uh, uh, conditions. Uh, we want to determine Uh, the uh, uh, how many the number how many k planes uh, satisfy all of them uh, 
Yeah, and it could be that the answer is infinite be many. It could be that the answer is none, but the most interesting case is uh, when this is a, a finite uh, number and uh, one uh, would like to uh, compute uh, that uh, number. Okay. So uh, how, to, uh, how to solve this? Uh, well, the, the general solution comes in the following steps. Uh, step one is uh, to determine what is the subset in the Grassmannian uh, of uh, varieties uh, that satisfy a given condition. So for CI, uh, let YI, in, well, in principle, it's just a subset in the Grassmannian, but we hope that this will be a subvariety, so that someone didn't give us too bad conditions. So let this be a variety of uh, all K planes that satisfy CI. Okay, so this is a sub variety. And uh, next, we, I can put it as a point two, we determine the class of uh, YI uh, inside the uh, Grassmannian. So, what, what do I mean like that? We try to express it as a combination, possibly with coefficients, um, so a sum, maybe uh, with some uh, coefficients uh, of um, Schubert uh, classes. Okay, uh, then what we would like to verify is that YIs intersect transversally. Uh, this is a very important step to be verified. It often causes a lot of problems as we will see in uh, forthcoming uh, lectures, but on the other hand, sometimes it's given uh, for free. And why, why, why is it so important? Because if, for example, we are counting the number of, um, of um, uh, planes that satisfy this condition, we are really interested, let me write it here on, on the margin, we are interested in this set. And, uh, well, if it's positive dimensional, then our answer is infinite. If, if it's empty, then our answer is zero. But we are interested when these are points. And if we would like our, our, uh, chow, uh, our chow ring answer to coincide with the number of those points, the intersection uh, needs to be um, uh, generically transverse. So uh, otherwise it could be that we have a different number of points. They just have some scheme structure uh, than the answer we get. So the answer that we are interested in uh, is, uh, is uh, to compute, uh, compute uh, uh, this product uh, in, inside the uh, chowering of the Grassmannian, okay? So note that basically the theorem, this, this theorem we started from, this one, uh, in principle solved, solved uh, the uh, last step. Okay, now uh, we will go, we will go uh, uh, from, from uh, the last point. So now we, we focus on, on point uh, three, which uh, in general uh, can, be, can be hard. So why, why three we can often uh, deal with? Namely, often, often the conditions CI, uh, they, uh, they are in some sense general. And um, let me now uh, present a 
formal theorem uh, that will uh, help us to prove uh, transversality. And just before that, let me say what, what, what do I mean that, that these conditions are generic? So for example, we count uh, the, uh, the number of k-planes, let's say, passing through a general point or general two points or general three points. Of course, for example, when you have three points, the answer would be different if the three points lie on a line and you want to do some computation, so if they are general. But often the question is framed in such a way that the points are general. We will see in a second how to, how to use it. And the main uh, theorem, uh, let me now state it, is uh, Kleiman's transversality theorem. Uh, so it says that if we have a group G acting uh, on a variety X, uh, transitively, which means you can move any point to any point, but uh, in most cases we should uh, we should have in mind the action uh, of uh, GLV on uh, the Grassmannian GKV. Okay, so something uh, something like that. Uh, then for any two sub varieties. Uh, y1, uh, y2, uh, and and general g in g. Well, what what do I mean by a general g in g? I mean that there is an open set, the risky open set um, of uh, uh, elements uh, in g, such that what the varieties. G Y one and Y two are uh, generically transverse. Yes. So, in other words, Y one and Y two, of course, they may intersect um, in a strange way, like two lines on a plane may coincide. Uh, but once you act on one of those varieties um, with, uh, with G, then the uh, intersection will be uh, transverse. Uh, okay, so, so in fact, often uh, the challenge uh, is, to, uh, is to find the varieties, YI, yes? So, uh, so, so this will be often done. We will see on examples how using, um, using uh, Kleiman's uh, theorem, uh, but the, the the first two points, that is uh, how to determine uh, this um, class, can be can be quite uh, challenging. Yes, so we are we are left with understanding uh, understanding this. Uh, okay. So uh, first of all, notice that this is not so bad because uh, in the exercise from the previous day, you were basically solving such a problem. You were uh, determining the uh, uh, the uh, locus in the Grassmannian uh, of uh, uh, of planes, k planes that satisfy certain uh, conditions. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's let's maybe do one more example. Uh, namely, uh, remember that one of our starting problems was to count the number of lines uh, that uh, intersect four given uh, P1s in uh, P3. Okay, so here we have four conditions because we want to intersect four lines. They are all the same, uh, but, um, uh, but um, well, this, uh, uh, this does not mean that they are exactly the same because the lines are different, but they are of the same type. So uh, in other words, we uh, want to understand uh, what is uh, Y in G24 uh, where, where 
where well we we want those uh, classes of uh, lines uh, p uh, in y if and only if uh, p intersects uh, l uh, non-trivially. So if you look in P3, the intersection is non-empty. If you if you think in the projective space P3 or the intersection is uh, distinct from zero if you uh, look in uh, C4. Yes, so uh, we, we, we would like to understand um, what is why. So, uh, so first of all, uh, this why depends on this line L. That's clear. If we change a line, different lines will intersect that line than, than another line in, in P3. So actually this is y, YL and it's, uh, it is true that YL is distinct from YL prime, but their classes are the same. For example, because uh, the action of uh, GLV can bring any one line to any other line. Okay, so in particular, if we fix, if we fix a flag a, a complete flag that includes L, so we, we fix a point uh, which belongs to L, uh, which is in some P2, which is in uh, P3, then, then, Basically, by one of the definitions we have given for um, uh, for uh, Schubert varieties, the definition that is from the uh, from the uh, complete uh, uh, flag, uh, we know that the uh, class of uh, YL, or actually, if we fix this flag, even YL, is just equal uh, to the uh, Schubert class of one box. And if you, uh, if you take your line in uh, P3 uh, in uh, coordinates, you will also see uh, that the um, uh, pivots uh, are exactly uh, corresponding to, uh, to this class. That is, notice, well, what, what, what kind of matrix uh, represents uh, represents um, uh, a P1 or a two-dimensional plane that intersects L that is spanned by E3 and E4. Well, the fact that our two plane must intersect this, it means that it needs to contain a vector in L. So something of this type. And apart from this, the second generating vector can be completely arbitrary. Okay, so uh, we uh, we obtain indeed uh, this uh, uh, Schubert class. Okay, so now how many lines intersect four general lines? Remember, we need to check transversality. So if we pick uh, one L, second L, third L, and fourth L, we we want that we want that uh, y L one up to y L four intersect transversally. Well, but this can be assured by noting that we can set uh, this to be G Y L two. Uh, why is that for for a general G? Because if you pick a general line and act with a general change of coordinates, you will get a, another general line. So this basically means that the lines are in uh, in, in in general positions. This is just explicitly an application of uh, Kleiman's. Uh, theorem. Okay, so, so, so notice that on this example, we managed uh, to do one, we managed to do two, we managed to do three, so what remains is to do four, namely, uh, we need to, we need to uh, compute uh, these uh, to fourth. Yeah, so this is a box times a box times a box times a box. And now we apply Pierre's rule, but remember we will have to put to zero anything that does not fit in a two by two box. And yeah, so first the two boxes. Well, I can add it here or I can add it here. 
and then I need to multiply that times a box times a box. Okay, so first I do this product. Well, I cannot add here because that would get outside of my rectangle. So actually I can only do this. Uh, then I will do this product, uh, which is uh, this, okay. And now I have to uh, multiply by the last box, but we see already that this is just two times this. Okay, and this two is the important thing because this means that we have two, the class of a point. Okay, so the answer to the question, to the question how many lines intersect four general lines um, in, uh, P, uh, in P3 is two. Okay, and uh, we used uh, uh, Schubert uh, calculus for that. Now, our next aim for quite some time will be to uh, determine uh, tools to uh, uh, express these classes of uh, YI in, in an efficient way. And as we will see, they will offer come as churn classes of a, a vector bundle. So, um, so first I need to say a few words about vector bundles. Uh, okay, so uh, so informally, a vector bundle informally uh, is a family of vector spaces parameterized uh, by a variety. And uh, for, for, for a point in X, we will get a vector space uh, Vx. So now comes a formal definition, but in fact, you, what you should keep in mind is that. Okay, so uh, a formal definition uh, is uh, as follows. So to be honest, this is like a half formal definition because in modern uh, language, I should um, uh, speak um, uh, about uh, locally free shifts of modules, but I don't want to introduce too much uh, shift uh, terminology, especially that uh, vector bundles predate uh, that language. So let's, let's slightly proceed uh, uh, historically. So a vector bundle, We will say that this is a morphism of algebraic varieties. V to X, and this will be, let, let me call this morphism um, F. Uh, so such that, such that. Uh, I should also add that sometimes people refer just to V uh, as, uh, as, 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 as the vector bundle, but uh, it somehow comes naturally with this uh, projection morphism to X. Okay, so what are the uh, conditions? Well, we need, to, we need to say that V actually, so over X, we, we expect a vector space VX. So formally, uh, this is done as follows, that there is a covering, there is, an open covering uh, UI of X such that well if we take the inverse image of uh, UI we have uh, a natural isomorphism of uh, the uh, pre-image uh, with an r-dimensional uh, vector space times uh, ui okay so now uh, ui now now you can see that somehow a part this v is covered by parts which are just a product a part of x times uh, a vector space and to be uh, to be um, uh, even more please precise uh, the map f has to be in this local chart, a projection. So F 
uh, restricted to uh, F inverse of uh, uh, U uh, I is uh, the composition is, uh, well, first we, uh, on this, we apply uh, M I. So M I, where does it go from? It, it, it lands here uh, and, uh, and uh, we would like to go to X, but notice that this comes with a natural projection. Let me call it pi to I. Uh, which goes to ui. So, so now we can apply pi to i and compose. And uh, we want f to be simply after this isomorphism to be equal to uh, to that projection. Okay, so that's uh, one condition. Unfortunately, the second one I have to put on the next page. So uh, the uh, second uh, condition uh, is uh, that. Uh, Notice that if we have, if we have uh, uh, x in uh, in two uh, such open sets, uh, well, then then for this x we can somehow have two two isomorphisms f minus one of x. One isomorphism uh, is with uh, C R R times x using. Uh, uh, I2 and one uh, is with uh, CR times X uh, using I1. Yeah, so so somehow, well, this is isomorphic with CR and this is also uh, isomorphic with uh, CR. So, uh, you know, in, in principle, we didn't say that this I1 and I2 have, have uh, uh, much uh, uh, in common, but uh, we want, uh, we want, we want for X, we want this to be, this is um, uh, isomorphism of vector spaces is, uh, well, the important thing is linear, linear isomorphism of, uh, vector spaces. Okay. Um, okay. So, so in particular, notice that what we got here for X, we got a map from uh, CR to CR that is a linear isomorphism. So in other words, uh, we got a map from uh, U1 uh, intersected U2, uh, we got a map to GLR, yeah, because, well, uh, linear isomorphism means uh, basically, uh, basically, uh, uh, it's basically uh, an element of GLR. R. Okay, so uh, that was the end of uh, definition, but I want to say somehow a different point of view on that definition. So the, this maps, the maps uh, are, are known as transition functions. Yeah, so they tell you, so if you're in one, let's say U1, you have your uh, CR, CR, CR. Yeah? Now, if you have a U2, you also have a CR, 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 but it does not mean that it takes the first basis vector to the first basis vector, the second basis vector to the second basis vector in one CR. You, you really may need, may need to make a transition. Yes, so notice that somehow on on, on a given UI, I'm requesting to have a basis of your vector space. But globally, I, I don't have such, such a basis uh, because uh, when I pass from one affine open piece to another, I have a transition function. And um, uh, what is important is that basically if you have X and you have a covering and you know those transition functions, they, ha they of course have to satisfy certain compatibilities. They don't, cannot be just arbitrary functions because if you make a transition from U1 to U2 and from U2 to U3, this needs to be the same as if you make the transition from U1 to U3. In the definition I have given, uh, it, this is assured because we have one variety V, but if you would just to define a, 
um, vector bundle from the transition functions. You can do it um, uh, using gluing procedures, assuming they satisfy the uh, obvious conditions required for uh, gluing. Okay some more notation. Uh, I, I said that there are the spaces um, uh, Vx, so this is just F inverse of x for, uh, for x in uh, x, and this has a natural structure of a vector space. Uh, in particular, it has a zero, but it does not have a natural basis. Yeah? So this is a vector space, but uh, we cannot say that, uh, that it has a, a fixed uh, basis. And one, one more notion, that of a section, so a section of a, a vector bundle uh, is a morphism. Uh, the other way around, from X to uh, V. Uh, such that uh, if we uh, if we uh, take uh, a section and then we uh, project uh, this is identity uh, on uh, x and uh, and notice that every vector bundle has at least one section but it could be a zero section because our vector bundles come with zero so every every vector bundle has a zero section. Well, but uh, it's not true, and uh, well, in particular, it's not obvious because it's not true that that it uh, has more sections. So it 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 will not make sense to say that I take the first basis vectors in my CR because because the transition functions might be non-trivial. Uh, okay, and uh, the last notion uh, for uh, uh, this part of the lecture is a morphism uh, of uh, vector bundles. So if we have um, V1 and uh, V2 uh, over, uh, uh, over X, so uh, morphism of um, uh, vector bundles as above. Is a morphism of algebraic varieties uh, such that Uh, the diagram. Well, so we have V1 over X, uh, we have V2 over X, and we have V1 to V2. So we want this to commute. Mm, and uh, well, uh, in particular, uh, for every X in X, uh, we are getting a map of vector spaces v1x to v2x and uh, we want this to be a linear isomorphism is uh, 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 sorry not an isomorphism because we are talking about a morphism so uh, is uh, uh, a linear map Yeah. So for example, when X is a point, well, then your vector bundles are just vector spaces. And there are many uh, algebraic maps of affine spaces, but we will say that this is a morphism of vector bundles only for uh, linear maps. We want to uh, preserve the uh, linear structure. Uh, okay. Uh, and all this, it's included basically in one sentence if you know a sheaf of modules. So you can, you can say that, um, a vector bundle is a locally free sheaf of modules. This locally free comes from the trivialization functions mi, uh, and uh, the elements of the module are basically sections. So if you restrict to an open set, then, then there are sections of, uh, of the restriction. But this will be not needed for the future lectures. This is just uh, for people who are familiar with sheaves. This can be set in a much faster and easier 
way. Uh, thank you very much, and we see each other after a short break.